I'm bringing some of the wisest, successful, most inspirational human beings on this planet into your classrooms for your benefit. When everything was stacked against me, that's when I was at my best. You never know when the days could stop counting, that's when you make them count. You gotta shoot your shot. We all have the ability. I can do anything I put my mind to. And they took a leap of faith. These are the answers, the blueprints, I'm providing them to you. I have this heart that bleeds for the youth of this country. Because we, we need to learn to lead. We need to elevate ourselves. That's how this world changes. It starts with you. Today we're traveling to Memphis, Tennessee. St. Jude is leading the world in the way we understand, treat, and defeat childhood cancer and other diseases. On top of being the leaders in, in fighting and treating childhood cancer, families don't have to pay a single dime. It's a place where everybody cares about each other. This is the story of one St. Jude cancer survivor and his message to make every day count. I was just downtown having pizza in the back of my truck watching the sunset with my girlfriend. And my mom was like, yeah, you need to come to the doctor's right now. So I came back that night and then it was that next Sunday where we had a meeting with the, my doctor, who was a family friend. They're all in a circle. He said, Adam, I'm afraid you had leukemia. And I was like, what's leukemia? So it was a Sunday night, I had a 8 a.m. appointment at St. Jude that next morning. So that's when I met with my doctor and he gave me my actual diagnosis of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia is a cancer that affects the white blood cells which fight infection and help protect the body against disease. And treatment involves chemo, spinal taps, surgeries, I wasn't making every day count. And then after my diagnosis, you never know when the days could stop counting. That's when you make them count. You know, we're often guilty of essentially not truly living, doing the things we want to before we die. We float through life, we float through routine. I challenge you to just to do two things, two things a year. Make a list and do two things. Knock them out every year, vow to yourself. Make it a book of life instead of a bucket list. Make every day count. And by the time you're 70 and you look back on your life, you'll be so proud of it the things you accomplished, the things you did. Two, two things a year. Make every day count. Back in my high schooler shoes and to know that like I was being diagnosed with cancer, like my biggest worry was where I was going to college, but then it all changed when I was diagnosed. Adam was diagnosed with cancer when he was 16. And the doctor said if they caught it a few weeks later, he wouldn't have even been treatable. Went straight to the ICU that day. I started chemo that day. I had surgery the next day. I remember vividly waking up with a port. I had one right here and one right here. It's where you can easily stick a needle in. Um, and then it has a thing that goes straight to one of the veins in your heart. Once you're, the medicine goes in, it can go throughout the body really quickly than just putting it in a vein. Sometimes when you go through traumatic experiences, it doesn't set in all the way, right away. It takes a while to, to really understand and, and really impact you, how difficult the situation can be. And that's when I, I had my veggie smoothie with me that morning, just coming in. And uh, I called my mom and they're like, yeah, you can't eat anything, you can't eat anything. And that was like the first time I, like my freedom started to get taken away, like I made my veggie smoothie. I mean, sacrificed friends, sports. Um, I, I loved hanging out with people, but when you're going through treatment, your counts are so low, you basically can't hang out with people other than going to the hospital and going home, because you can easily get sick. So that was about a year long of just isolation, and it, it can really get to you. I woke up after one chemo day and I fell down the stairs and my dad caught me and I blacked out for a while and 
that's when I remember my sister crying, my mom crying. I could just tell it was having an emotional toll, a physical toll. It's just, it's just not right, really. I want you to think of one thing that matters to you at your school. It could be a nonprofit, a charity event. It could be a person that really needs your help. What actions are you taking today to help that person? And if you don't know how, ask them. How can I help you? I was determined to graduate with my class, um, and St. Jude made that possible. During that, I would go downstairs, um, meet with my teacher named Sarah, and it was just one-on-one. -on -one. Around the table, there would be probably two or three other patients with their uh, teachers with them. And that's when I met one of the strongest girls I've ever met, Hannah. We would, we would goof around the majority of the time, just mess around. She's no longer with me, um, but I know she's looking over me though. I'm basically just sick of it. Like I, I didn't know much about cancer until I was diagnosed, but then I realized really quickly how awful it is and the work that's being done at St. Jude to stop it. I knew I could do something with my story. You said that one of the things that came to you when you were when you were lying in a bed at, at St. Jude was that you decided that you wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. That was your quote. So I was getting chemo one day. I came up with a business plan to uh, raise money for St. Jude. But I called uh, the CEO of ALSAC. So he came over a few days later while I was getting chemo, and he was all for it. He was behind my back the whole way. Since being diagnosed in 2014, Adam, his family, and friends have committed themselves to raising funds for his St. Jude Heroes team, Adam's Army. They did this by holding bake sales, dog washes, to train even for a half marathon. In the first year alone, Adam had rallied with his team more than $170,000 for St. Jude. I, I tried to tell people, like, if I can do that, then you can do it with me. You can raise money with me. And that's when I knew that I had a really cool story to spread around and there was still a lot of work to be done. I want you to think of just one person, one charity event, it's a nonprofit that means something to you. How are you gonna help? How are you gonna get involved? What actions are you gonna take today to make that change? I'm here almost every other day from about seven to five, um, receiving a four hour chemo treatment. Um, and every day there's always a kid that I just look at and they can't speak. I mean, they're like two or three and I, I just know how much pain they're in. I've like been there. I've like taken their voice and try to just speak for my patients, my fellow patients. So last month, uh, raised $50,000 um, just from reaching out to friends who would commit to raising money. Um, so. And it's my goal uh, this year for $100,000. Um, and every year after that, until I'm 26 years old. Now it's uh, June, and I finished the last dose of that chemo um, last Friday. Pack up your bags, get out the door, you don't get chemo anymore. <laughs> So that's why St. Jude keeps fighting. That's why I keep fundraising. In the last 50 years, the survival rates have skyrocketed, so I can't imagine what's gonna happen in the next 50. Every student in this country has an opportunity to make a difference in the world around them. If you wanted to get started as a student, easiest thing you can do, first and foremost, go talk to an activities coordinator, or an assistant principal, or your principal, and make sure that they'd be okay with hosting a school-wide event. Once you've done that, it's very, very easy. Um, you or they go to stjude.org slash team up, and from there, it walks you through step-by-step -step of how to sign up, very quick and easy. The best ones that I've seen happen when two rival schools actually end up doing it at the same time. You never know when the next phone call that you get might absolutely shatter your world. 
the people that St. Jude treats, they've received that phone call. As a student, you have an opportunity to make their day even that much better. Just a little bit. You have an opportunity to potentially save a life.